Okay, no one is vulnerable, love all. And South is the dealer. <laughs> South sounds very interesting. They've got six points, but they've got seven long diamonds. They've got a void in hearts as well. Um, some players kind of adopt the strategy of if you've got a preemptive hand, which this definitely is, but you've got a four card major, it's not the right thing to do to open a preemptive bid because you might miss a major fit. I personally don't put myself in that camp. I'd much rather just preempt when you can. I'm erring on the side of aggression almost all of the time. So I would be opening this hand three diamonds, showing seven diamonds in a weak hand. Yes, you might miss a spade fit, but you want to try and be aggressive as and when you can. I get the vibe that this is the correct hand to be aggressive on because it's very weirdly distributed. So I will be opening three diamonds, seven diamonds weak hand. Now to West. Mm. Yeah, West has got an interesting hand here. They've got ten points. It's not a brilliant hand, but it has got a good, a good uh, spade suit. They would probably have been willing to bid two spades over two diamonds as an overcall, just about. Three spades over three diamonds, you want really ideally you want six cards in your suit, or a really good hand opening, hand plus with five really good spades, etc. I would argue that they're a spade short of being able to bid three spades here, or indeed a couple of extra good cards to get away with the fact that they've only got five good spades. I wouldn't blame you for bidding three spades here, but ideally at the three level you want a six card suit really. Um, I'm kind of miffed with this hand because I don't want to pass, but bidding three spades could easily get us in trouble if your partner bids four spades with you know, a few spades and ten points or something. You could easily not be making that. Um, the alternative would be to double. We're not strong enough to double and our partner might bid clubs, which is, which is no good. So I think you're bidding three spades or you're not. Um, I personally think you should have six spades or a better hand to bid three spades, so I'm going to pass, but I'm, I'm irked by that. But I think pass is the right bid. Okay, now to North, responding to their partner's three diamond bid. And they have a brilliant hand here, responding to three diamonds. They've got four diamonds along with their partner's seven diamonds, which means the level of the fit is 11 diamonds, i.e. seven over there plus four makes 11. We've got 11 points, but that's not really by the by. The main thing here is the huge diamond fit. So whenever your partner opens a preemptive bid, unless your hand is really strong and you think you can make game on actual genuine points, which we don't here, you bid on the level of the fit. The level of the fit says you bid for the number of trumps you hold. Seven diamonds across the road, we've got four makes eleven, so the correct bid is to jump to five diamonds. Not because you necessarily can make it, but because you think they can make something if you don't bid aggressively now. Okay, now to East. Yeah, East has got a really good hand, uh, as, as is the way often with these preemptive bids. The three diamond bid aggression, five diamonds is more aggression. They're trying to pinch from you here. It's really hard to know what to do here. The Instinct is to bid hearts, but of course you'd have to bid five hearts, which is a really high bid, and you've got a lot of losers in clubs and spades. Five hearts could easily get doubled and be going two, three off easily if your partner's not got much help over there. Um, alternatively, you could pass, but then of course if you pass, it's very likely they'll end in five diamonds. They might make five diamonds, Who's no, who knows, hard to say. Um, or you could double them, thinking they're not going to make five diamonds. I think any one of those choices is flawed, because bidding five hearts could easily be way off, Doubling, they could easily be making it, and pass, you've let their aggression win. So you actually can't really win here because you're too late to the party. They've got there first. Three diamonds, then five diamonds. Stops you from being able to do anything. Um, I think the correct action is probably to pass through uncertainty. I understand if you want to bid five hearts. Yeah, that's fine. It could go five hearts, pass, pass, double quite easily if your partner's not got the right hand for you. So I think the correct bid is to pass. I understand if you want to bid five hearts, though. If they'd only bid four diamonds, I think four hearts is the right bid. Four hearts could still be off, but at least it's less risky, because you've got lots of losers in these suits. Four hearts is taking a punt on hearts. Five hearts, for me, is just too much of a bid with so many losers in, in the black suits. So I think the correct action is to pass, albeit it's a very frustrated pass. Alright, opening lead against five diamonds. Everyone passed five diamonds out, so it's a, an opening lead. And the opening lead here is an obvious one. Whenever you've got top of touching two, two sequential cards, you want to be leading top of a sequence, and this is the best sequence to lead. Whenever you've got ace-king against a trump contract, it's almost always right, if not always right, to be leading top of touching. The ace from ace-king is pretty much the best lead you can find against a trump contract. So, nice and easy, ace of spades lead. Okay. North to put the dummy down.
Okay, upon seeing the dummy, we are delighted. They've got four really good diamonds, which is what they promised, four diamonds, albeit they have nice ones as well. But they've also got really useful features for us here. The Acer Club's opposite our weak suit, very useful, means we can grab the lead if we need to. The fact they've got very few points in hearts is very useful, because it means we're going to be able to rough hearts and there's no lost values there. And the Singleton Spade is really useful as well, because these four spade losers were spade losers, almost certainly weren't going to make the jack. Now we can rough spades on the dummy. So it looks like we're probably going to make this contract. We're going to lose a spade right now. We're going to lose a club eventually. And we're going to be able to rough the other three spades using dummies trumps. What that means is, because we've got 11 trumps, we need three trumps left behind to be able to rough three spades. We don't really want to draw the trumps at least not more than one round because we need to rough a spade, come back here, rough a spade, come back here, rough a spade. So we're going to have to be slightly careful with the way we play trumps. We're drawing two rounds of trumps here would be a mistake because we would end up with two trumps left on the dummy and three spades left in hand. So we need to rough three times in the dummy, so we need to not draw maximum one round of trumps. No more than that. Uh, the trumps, of course, could be one and one because we're missing only two of them. So we could draw the trumps in one round anyway, but if the trumps are two and nil, it would definitely be wrong to draw both rounds of trumps. So on this first spade, we're obviously going to play low. The spade that West plays is an interesting one. There's a singleton on the dummy, so there's no point in the spade they play telling their partner whether they like spades or not. What they should tell their partner is what suit they want next. This is known as a suit preference signal. The idea behind this is we know East is going to win the lead with the ace of spades and they're going to want to be playing clubs or hearts next. It looks obvious to play a heart, but it's possible West would want a club. The card that they play in spades tells them whether they want the higher ranking suit or the lower ranking suit. And the way a suit preference works is a high card says I would like the higher ranking suit. So in this instance, they're telling their partner to switch to hearts. We can see that that doesn't matter because on a heart switch, we're going to be able to rough it. But they don't know that, of course. They're looking at ace, king, queen, desperate for a heart. So we follow suit. We've lost one of our two permitted tricks. Of course, we might go down here, but looking at the dummy, we're probably not going to go down. And East listens to their partner's nine of spades saying the higher ranking suit and switches to a uh, heart. They're playing a medium heart because they haven't got an honour rather than a low heart which would promise an honour. It doesn't matter what we play. They play the queen and we rough it. And West is very sad because all their good hearts are useless. We now, having won the heart, we now need to rough the spades. So we want to rough a spade, come back, rough a spade, come back, rough a spade. Uh, we don't want to draw trumps necessarily. All of our trumps are big anyway. The only trump that's small is the three, which we're going to use right now. And then we can cross rough the hand, high cross roughing. All of our trumps are big. We've got the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 all the way up to the ace. So spade, low, rough, low. We need to come back to hand. We could come back with a trump. We can afford to use one round of trumps, but we don't need to. We can just rough the hearts. So heart, low, rough, low. Now we go back with a rough, just a pure cross rough, 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 and they play a spade. And kind of plays itself a little bit. Now we need to rough one more spade, so heart, doesn't matter, they could cover the king away, it doesn't matter, we're going to rough it anyway. Rough, heart, like so. And now we need to rough that last spade. Spade, roughed, they discard something. And now the final job is to draw the trumps before we end up giving the opponents a club. We're going to lose a club because we're missing a king and queen. We just need to draw the trumps off them to make sure our ace of club doesn't get roughed or something weird. So king of diamonds, they throw something away. Play the ace of diamonds on the king to get the lead here so that we can draw the final trump. Like so, king of diamonds. Then we play, we know the king and queen have gone, so the ace and king is fine. We play the jack of diamonds, drawing the last trump. Like so. And then... Having drawn the last trump, we now simply give the opponents a club. It doesn't matter what we do in clubs, they're going to hold on to the king and queen. We could try some kind of finesse or something, but the opponents will win a club. There's nothing we can do. We could even play two diamonds and then a club. They are going to win a club, assuming the defenders don't do something silly like throw all their clubs away. So we're going to win these two, we're going to win the ace of clubs, but we're going to lose this club. So that means we're going to win three, lose one, which means we make five diamonds on the nose.